I come from a technology background and uh, as such, whenever we design products, whenever we design solutions, uh, the UX people always complain that uh, we bring in quite, we bring in them quite later in the game. So, so I think uh, uh, having people like Smita with us, uh, thinking of design at a much earlier stage, has brought a cultural shift uh, in our whole process, and we start doing this right up front. And part of the reason um, she motivated me to come here and talk, saying that. Though you are from the technology background, you fit in here because we are talking about product and product design. So, so one of the things that we are doing uh, lately uh, is about chatbots, and I think it's pretty common. Uh, it's the way it's getting commoditized. Uh, most of you have already used something uh, by now. But I think the aspect that we want to focus, and that's where UX comes into play, is how to make it more easy to use and how to not talk about it only from a technology space. And I think Smita will cover some of that because what happens is when we talk about chatbots and when uh, technical folks design it, they always design it for themselves. So if you take it to users, they probably hardly cannot use it. How many of you have used a chatbot? Wow, that's cool. And uh, what's your experience using it? It does, does it get it every time? Mostly it's bad, right? It just doesn't get it. You give it after five tries, two tries, either it doesn't understand your accent or what you're typing, it doesn't get it. It's not pro, it's pre-programmed for doing something that only a certain way it does. So, so that's one of the challenges and how UX can help there, that's where uh, we want to go with it. So before we uh, start the talk, I think some things that we wanted to cover um, I think all of you understand probably chatbots, uh, but it's very important what are the components in there. So some of the people who are hearing it for the first time, I think things like natural language processing, NLP, intent, entities, utterances, these are the important things that, that constitute a chatbot. So when you start interacting with a conversational or doing a conversational interface, talk to a chatbot, things that are important is you, you specify what you want to do. Like for example, I want to book a conference room, I want to do a certain thing. That particular language, it's very easy when you're talking to each other. However, when it comes to a machine, there are many things being said as, as a part of that. And it has to infer all of that and respond. So typically the way it happens is there is a natural pro processing engine in built into these chatbots with which, which interpret all of those things. Because it's a machine, it's no longer a human. So it has to do, it has to classify an intent, which is the conference room booking. However, to satisfy that request, it needs more information like entities, when, where, and what time. So, so those things are very important. So it needs to ask. And every, whenever you say something, it's not apparent that you have specified the whole information. So a machine cannot give you a response unless it figures out the missing pieces. So one of the biggest intelligence that is there in chatbots or conversational interface is to find out what is the exact piece of missing information and ask you for that. So that rest everything gets interpreted, only what's missing is what is asked and that's where, that's what the beauty of the app or the interface is in terms of looking for that specific information, asking you for what time and scheduling the meeting. So that's where and then the loop goes back and forth again in terms of uh, conversing with the bot. So your experience with bot will go up, I mean improve, if it's just asking you for that one piece of missing information. The rest of the stuff, it's doing it uh, on the fly. So having taken you through this, this is the only tech part in this whole thing. So I will now leave it to Smita to cover you how we went about with the whole UX aspect of it, how we bought got UX into it uh, when it was all the technologists in the, in the room trying to solve this puzzle. So over to you, Smita. Thank you, Srikant. Thank you for helping uh, the terminologies aspect of it. So now I, I guess like people are know uh, what is intent, okay, and what are the utterances and entities. So moving ahead, uh, to begin with, first I would like to show a few of the bad examples of bot 
who triggered like uh, those are the one which triggered me to think about can we have some ux intervention in between so that we can build it better so uh, first bad example you can see there uh, user is trying to ask about menu or options and chat is giving response the same response again and again okay the next example is something where user is trying to talk and ask about weather on weekend but the kind of response is chat giving is irrelevant okay because chat uh, like bot is not able to understand the term which is used which is weekend which which might not be programmed at the back end and the last example where bot have given some option and the last thing in that option is you can see few more but human tend to ignore few things so maybe user ignored that and user wrote like can i see more but the response which bot is giving is uh, uh, i will get back to you so bot is not able to understand that particular stuff so these are the kind of examples uh, which shows how chatbot are not doing well right now so um, let us understand why chatbot fails okay so it is basically because of the conversation so take a example of conversation between two humans so for example if half an hour back if i would have asked shrikant would you like to have coffee shrikant so shrikant might have said no i'm good or yeah we can go and have coffee but when it comes the same conversation with chatbot okay chatbot will ask me when at what time so all those detail chatbot will ask but why shrikant is not asking me because we human do a conversation which is known as a contextual conversation because we know context i un like shrikant understood the context it is now okay and when it is now he will not ask me when and what time but in case of uh, bot they are not yet there okay so they are still learning but we we know like we have learned language from our childhood so for us it is very easy so unconsciously we give all the answers but for bot we need to add that intelligence and how to add that intelligence is we can we can do do few things so these are the five steps ux okay which will help us to take bot to for the next step i will not say super intelligent okay but at least where it is right now we can take it to the next step so very first step is normal as a ux process requirement gathering the st second step is as uh, as you have seen the diagram where intent is a important part of in case of chatbot so intent finalization is the place where we can definitely we as a ux can definitely help the third part is a uh, flow design or conversational flow design there definitely we can help the next one is identifying uh, or defining um, i okay and in interface elements and the last part is we can also help chatbot to become smart after analyzing the responses from the user and how the actually flow goes okay so these are the five step ux and uh, we have done like we have done a bot in house and there were we played all these five steps okay so as i told you like first step is understanding requirement okay so shrikant would you like to uh, give a little focus on this because shrikant is a person who triggered it as far as the business goals is concerned of course the primary goal is of course the the financial side uh, why you build bots why you do things is uh, it has to be it's relevant in the market how how quickly you can make a lot of money so that's that's primarily thing but you cannot state it like that so the way i stated it is uh, firstly we see this th whole trend towards moving towards intelligent applications so that's that's what we need to build uh, and provide to our customers ability to convert their current applications to more intelligent apps and and one of the ways that we will do that is by using this conversational bots which are ai and machine learning enabled so so that was the spec and if you see in all my spec there was nothing about uh, ux or anything so 
so there was it was purely a group of tech people that i, I, I that i did uh, our product architects our engineers and, and those were the people that that focused but very soon we realized that uh, we needed to bring the ux aspect in it because most of the bad examples that you saw when i showed my first demos uh, after people working <laughs> at it for two uh, two months was pretty much that it w it wouldn't do a single thing right and all the language used and responses were pretty much all techy stuff so there was nothing that it really did correctly uh, but then we brought in uh, uh, smita at the right time and then she will tell you how the whole uh, thinking changed from that perspective so uh, after uh, shrikan told me all this focus i understood it because end of the day ux need to understand business requirement and business focus as well so uh, i asked shrikan what kind of bot you want to build so shrikan said let us take a few like simple example like conference room booking app because our focus was in hr tech domain so we took two examples or two uh, things like one is conference room booking app and another is uh, time bo time off bot okay so uh, definitely my target audience will be employee so that's the reason i collected few things which are employee focus okay when i uh, when i have like discussion with when i had discussion with shrikant about it okay um, but then i i cross question uh, shrikant we have already app in place we have already website in place okay and their the application is doing fantastic when it comes to time off then why do you need chatbot so what we did is we we uh, we brainstorm on few of the use cases where shrikant convinced me why bot is important okay so it's not like that shrikant told me and i just jumped and did so i did my fair job of ux by cross questioning him about why exactly he is looking for bot so one of the use case which i would like to tell you was very relevant uh, so for example new joiny comes okay and he wants to know about what all leave policies are or leaves are available for him then if you consider mobile app considering the real estate that kind of information he might not go get on the mobile app if you consider web application which has a really big real estate but then a kind of minute level information will be somewhere down the line in the third or fourth level of our information architecture right so definitely user will not get that information straight so i i got convinced by shrikant that definitely chatbot will help because here uh, new joiny just have to type one single sentence or speak it out a single sentence and then the information will be fetched and reached to him so i got convinced so this was the first step which we did the second step was a very important one which is finalizing intent okay so here i will not go by all the bullet points in interest of time so uh, i will i will first uh, tell you about why exactly we need to finalize intent okay so this is how our tech tech guys or technical people or developers think about intent so take a example of conference room booking so developer will think that okay book conference room that's the single intent okay but when it comes to real world i'm sorry when it comes to real world okay if i if i talk to 10 10 20 people they will have very different intents right but if i consider business requirement and feasibility i might not be able to attend all those intent so definitely what we have to do as a ux we need to pick few which are important from both of the aspect employee aspect and uh, business aspect so this is why i think uh, intent finalization is very important okay but how we did it we did it really quick we design like i design a research plan we did quick in depth interview with 12 people then we are uh, i'm seeing the time so i i want to skip this one because uh, only 5 minutes are remaining uh okay so we did in depth interview really quick one we got few intents okay from uh, uh like 
we got a list of intents which are near about 10. We validated it with uh, stakeholders, okay, and uh, whatever the output was, six intent. What we did is with that six intent, I did a survey, okay, and in that survey, we were able to finalize four intent, okay. So, this is how we are able to reach two intent. I skip one slide which was about persona. We, there was an output from the research where we were able to get few insights about the users where we are able to get them categorized. So, that categorization is something at the end I will connect, okay. That's the reason I uh, just skipped that one, okay. Then, when we know that there are four intents for the conference room, the next step is we need to define a conversational flow for each of the, those intents. So, as I told you, developer and tech people was thinking like booking conference room is a single intent, okay? But when we did in-depth interview, okay, we came across that is not the only intent. People want to book conference room based on their specific need like I want a conference room in head office at second floor with 15 people capacity. That was not the intent which we will be able to achieve with simple, simple straightforward way of booking conference room. Okay, So we are able to find four more intents. Okay, like a specific conference room booking, then uh, viewing the detail of the conference room booking, like who booked it and all. And the last one is uh, uh, re requesting someone to cancel their booking so that I can use that. Okay, so these are the uh, intents and I have also showed utterances there. So what is utterances is intent can have so, intent will have many different ways to say the same thing. That those are the utterances. You can click this and you can see the uh, utterances. I will not go in detail in interest of time. But utterances is like based on the human, how they say same thing in different ways. Okay. Then, then this part comes, which is important one, where, uh, where actually we have to write a script how bot will talk and how uh, human will talk, okay? So this is a happy path, a straightforward one, okay, to begin with. This is something we design, like we have written it for all four intents and we gave it to uh, developers to begin with, okay? So uh, these are the happy path and when we we done with the uh, happy path flow, we started working on uh, information architecture, okay? Information architecture is something like this. So first level is straightforward intent and their happy path. But there will be few scenarios. So let me let me clarify one thing. Bot understand whatever context you set it at one level. So for example, if you set a con context of uh, booking conference room. So whatever steps or whatever flow it has, it will follow that only. It will not understand where and when it has to go move to the next intent. Okay. So what we have designed is connecting paths. So what are those things where if user is in one intent flow, which is like book conference room, what are the things when user ask bot should tech connect it to next intent and the next intent is specific conference room and the next intent is what are the things which will take it to the uh, view details and the last one is uh, request for cancel. So this was the next layer of information architecture and we also helped uh, bot with getting few terms which are like stop, I'm not getting it, it's not clear to me please cancel it. So those kind of uh, things, if it is coming from user, then bot has to clear everything because it, it is based on the context. So it has to go back to the happy path so that it can start fresh. And there are limitations which we all know, uh, like for example, the four intent. So what if user wants to do something with the the, with the fifth one which is not designed yet. So for that thing, we definitely help user to get a human support. So there should be few words which will help uh, bot to understand now I have to give the contact of HR or uh, 
things like that okay so this is this is the fourth step and then visual design starts in visual design again in the interest of time we need to define bot uh, personality okay the tone the conversation tone it should match with uh, the way bot will what all things bot will help with okay so then the next theme yeah so uh, the end of the fourth step is defining the uh, interface elements okay i am just skipping this particular slide here we just have to keep one thing in our mind that if we are designing it for um, uh, customized mode or customized platform we designer have free hand to do it if it is based on some like we are using microsoft platform and if we are using some channel like facebook or uh, skype or slack then we have there is restriction so designer needs to understand that restriction as well so this was it uh, i don't think we have time to show demo uh, we were having two demos one for time off and another if you have uh, like if you are interested i can show you Late, uh, like later on the last step was the last step was where you can actually so understanding the responses studying those there are analyzing tools based on that we can we can improvise the flow which we have already defined so based on the responses we can we can improvise the conversation flows which we have already uh, uh given to uh, like we have already given to the development okay so that was the analyzing part and future future what we can do is uh, that's where i said uh, the persona stuff so uh, based on the responses we can we can do uh, a chatbot can converse differently based on what type of user he or she is so that's our future we are trying to solve this so thank you very much